Red Flows. What's up, guys? This is Daniel Logan, Boba Fett from Attack of the Clones, The Clone Wars, Book of Boba, uh, Skywalker Saga Game, uh, and hopefully many more things in the Star Wars galaxy. You are listening to Jay and Dennis on Podcast Stardust. Yep, this is the way I've spoken. Welcome to Podcast Stardust. This is the fully owned and operational podcast dedicated to Star Wars news, reviews, and discussion. I'm Dennis Keithley. And I'm Jay Krebs. And in this episode, we'll be discussing the Padawan's Pride audiobook by Brian Q. Miller. But before we start talking about that, Jay, I want to remind everybody where we can be found around the internet. Of course, Dennis. My pleasure. As always, we are on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Stardust. Okay. The dish is aligned. The signal's boosted to maximum output. The shield is down. We are now broadcasting to the galaxy. So as I just mentioned, we're going to be talking about Padawan's Pride, which was written by Brian Q. Miller, and it was narrated by Kevin Kemp uh, for Audible. And this is just the blurb that came out with a book. And this literally was a surprise drop about, what, two weeks ago? Jen? Yeah. Three weeks ago? I mean, it came out of nowhere. And the blur that they have on Audible is, as when a Republic spy goes missing on the moons of Varl, the Jedi Council asks Obi-Wan and Anakin to infiltrate the underground pod racing circuit run by a crime boss believed to be holding the spy prisoner. With Anakin posing as a hotshot racer and Obi-Wan as his attendant, tensions between the two threaten to run even higher than usual. But when Obi-Wan is forced to leave Varl, Anakin is on his own as he faces a series of increasingly treacherous races that will determine his face, fate, and that of the spy. Master and Apprentice must use all their Jedi skills in this action-packed tale of cutthroat competition, deadly deception, and ultimately what it means to be a Padawan. Um, I'm not sure that that description is entirely accurate. Um, <laughs> it generally describes what this is about, but I'd quibble with some of the details. And I guess, and I'm not going to break it down by detail by detail, but I think it'll become apparent as we discuss the audiobook. So before we get into a detailed discussion... What did you think about this overall? And what's your non-spoiler response, I guess I should say? Well, first of all, I definitely agree with you with the description, because after listening to the audiobook, it was like, okay, yeah, but no, Mm -hmm. (laughs) in all the same ways. Um, So my non-spoiler review is that I really enjoyed this. It was a great way to gobble up an amazing little story that, you know, we were talking about that we don't get anything from this particular time frame and mm-hmm. just getting to know what Anakin was dealing with at the time, just being, you know, a few years after the Phantom Menace and what Obi-Wan's role seemed to be as his mentor and his master. And also just in general, what the the scope of the Jedi Order was, you know, planning for Anakin in terms of the way that they saw his future so and and of course it's getting back to some of anakin's roots as a pod racer and it was just a heck of a lot of fun i mean i listened to most of it while i was doing some gardening over the weekend and it comes in i think just around four hours just maybe under four hours and it's it's quick it's enjoyable and um i feel like i need to listen to it again quite honestly but i I really enjoyed it but what do you think yeah i enjoyed it as well it's very fast paced uh, for certain um, and yeah, I was, uh, very intrigued as you just said, because we're getting this early Anakin Obi-Wan adventure. Um, and for the same reason you mentioned, we just don't have a lot of content set between the Phantom Menace and attack of the clones. And so this is filling one of those gaps. And I'm beginning to think, you know, with this, the Mace window book that's coming out in a couple of weeks that this may be an era that they're starting to fill with content because mm-hmm. it is so untapped. Here And then again, those years right before The Phantom Menace as well, as we kind of saw with John Jackson Miller's recent book. Uh, so this is, um, yeah, so it was enjoyable. Um, I would definitely listen to it again at some point. I kind of do hope they put out a print version of this in the future as well, after yes. it's had its opportunity to get a, you know, this audio run and they get people to on Audible to check it out. 
my one criticism is like, I'm not convinced this is a story that had to be told when mm -hmm. it comes down to it. Um, and we'll kind of get into some reasons why as we get into some more of our spoiler thoughts. But that being said, it is, it's, yeah, it felt like this could have been a, uh, almost like two or three episodes of some animated series or something, the way it was set up. Oh yeah. And, and carried out. And I think it would have worked uh, that way. Oh yeah, I agree. And, and I'm with you, you know, is it a story that absolutely had to be told? No. And also if, you know, some people didn't really like the pod race scene in mm -hmm. in the phantom menace so th if that's the case then this may not be something overall that might appeal to those people because there's a huge chunk of this that's obviously devoted to pod, pod racing. racing yeah and you know how they got they that operate. part right <laughs> yeah they sure <laughs> did <laughs> but yeah I, I i'm sure we'll get it we'll get into it but i i did appreciate knowing that these other pod racing circuits actually existed and how they operate so i thought that was cool okay well, then let's go ahead and get into some of our more spoilery thoughts here. So if you haven't listened to this yet and you don't want to be spoiled, this would be a good time to bail and come back later. Um, but with that having been said, the the book picks up. You know, one of the other things that happen is we've got Anakin stealing Plo Koon's <laughs> prototype <laughs> interceptor and flying it around Coruscant. And he's we're getting some of his inner thoughts that he not sure that he actually likes it on Coruscant. You know, he's not sure that he's better off from having been here as opposed to being back on Tatooine. This is boring. Uh, and so that, you know, he, now he's prone to do things like steal this interceptor here. And then of course, you know, he's chatting with uh, traffic controllers that are insisting on him going back to the temple and he's resisting all that. He's about to make a break for it out of atmosphere. And then Obi-Wan calls and brings him back to Coruscant here. And we kind of get this sense. I, I, I don't want to say that's like a strained relationship. It's just not the best of relationships mm -hmm. between Anakin and Obi-Wan. But uh, mm -hmm. what did you think about all that? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought the opening was perfect because, mm -hmm. you know, again, we've got this, this young Anakin who, as we know, he's always thirsted for adventure. And he's, you know, he's kind of like what, what Luke was, you know, always eyes on the future, never where he is and what he's doing, as Yoda would say. But, you know, he, as you said, he's bored and he's kind of questioning, do I really want to be a Jedi? You know, it's almost like mm -hmm. a case of be careful what you wish for because you might get it. And in this case, he definitely did. Mm -hmm. um, but I also really appreciated how this started off with Obi-Wan, too. And he was very pensive about his relationship with Qui-Gon and, you know, what Qui-Gon would have done in his situation. And as much as it it pained him to to really think about Qui-Gon that, you know, here he was left with this apprentice in Anakin, and he's learning how to be a master himself. But yet, you know, he's getting to that point where we're starting to see almost the the Clone Wars version of Obi-Wan, you know, with the beard and Anakin hates the beard, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. But, you know, and, and so it's almost like he thinks that that Obi-Wan's trying to be old because he said he looks more like a father instead of a brother, you know, and there's all these things. So, you know, to echo what you just said, it's not necessarily that their relationship was strained, but it was just not in sync. Like we get to yeah. see it later on. Yeah. Obi-Wan doesn't know what to do with Anakin nope. yeah. other than honor the vow he made to Qui-Gon to train him mm -hmm. there. Um, I also kind of had to laugh because Anakin hated the beard and remind me, I think it was in Brotherhood when Anakin and Padme were making fun of his hair, the mullet. Oh yeah, that he had. So Anakin yep. just can't be pleased with anything. Uh, Obi Wan no. does with his appearance there. Um, so uh, you know, before we get onto what happens next, the other thing we find out is that Obi Wan's been devoting a lot of time to the library, mm -hmm. trying to figure out what was going on with Darth Maul, where he came yes. from, if there was any clues about who was going to be. You know, he was as a brack. They knew that. And that kind of creates a problem because the Baraks are common around the galaxy and could have come from all kinds of different planets. But it's a neat little nod because Jocasta New makes a brief appearance there. Yeah. And, you know, and it's not like it's a huge big reference or cameo. And of course, you know, that does kind of suggest why she knew who he was in Attack of the Clones when he's trying to figure out where Camino is because he mm -hmm. has spent a significant amount of time there in the past. Right, right. And he, he's there at night, too. And that's that's how he ends up getting contacted mm -hmm. about Anakin. And, you know, and Anakin's like, what are you doing up? And I could ask you the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Of, which I thought was was great also. 
Yeah, it also kind of reminded me of, um, what was it, Master and Apprentice uh, by Claudia Gray, where, you know, Obi-Wan was always going to the library to get, like, prophecies and stuff like that for Qui-Gon. Oh, there. yeah. He's he's had lots of reasons to be in libraries <laughs> over the course. This is true. Of, and now I'm beginning to appreciate that. You know, he is a bit of a bookworm and a researcher more than I ever realized uh, mm -hmm. that he was there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing, too, with Anakin stealing this starfighter that was Plo Koon's is all I could think of was in Attack of the Clones where he says, you know, Master, you know me. I, I had to find a speeder with the kind of the color that I wanted and the right kind of controls, you know, or whatever it was that he said. And it's kind of like the same excuse that he gives mm -hmm. here. I was just trying to trying it out. Mm -hmm. Making yeah. sure it's OK. But we see how far the relationship has come in attack of the clones from here you know they do have oh, that yeah. banter there and it's like you know if only you practiced your lightsaber skills as well as you you know your wit my young apprentice uh but okay so they get called to the carpet by the jedi council and they're waiting out there to find out what their punishment's going to be and you know obi-wan's a little bit sour because he's facing punishment too for mm -hmm. letting his padawan get out of line but they really don't get punished at all they get sent on this mission to varl and it comes to come to find out this is like really their first mission here right. which i don't know i guess i found a little surprising i mean on the one hand it makes sense because anakin has had no training as a jedi after you know prior to the conclusion of the phantom menace so he would have to have some time at the temple but it kind of begs a question is oh you want just been hanging around the temple for these three years as well um uh, you know that seems unlikely for him or at least in my imagination yeah i guess when you put it that way it does seem like pretty extreme for him to, mm -hmm. to be around just for that purpose. But for Anakin, I can see where it was important because starting so late into the Jedi order, he has to be able to almost, you know, basically backtrack on his skills and establish routine and establish the lightsaber training and establish, you know, all of the meditation, which of course, you know, Anakin comes to really appreciate later on, even though mm -hmm. he doesn't really appreciate it now. And all of the, the research and the, the, teachings in the books which is why anakin's so bored but i feel like you know they were probably just stuffing this all into him because he had lost so many years that other padawans would have had so yeah i feel like obi-wan was probably just stuck no wonder he was doing so much time in the library with joe Costanu. <laughs> right exactly well and it's he and he did have an obsession trying to figure, figure oh, that yeah. out so mm -hmm. okay so i'm gonna lay down some some more summaries of things that happen here so we can kind of get into the rest of the discussion of this story. And they've been assigned to this mission to Varl for exactly what was stated in the summary here that there is this pod racing circuit that's been set up and there's a Republic spy. I lost the reason why the Republic spy was there in the first place, but it really doesn't matter. It's kind of the MacGuffin for this whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they need Anakin to pose as a pod racer because he is a pod racer. He's the only one that they they've got that they know can do this. And he's going to go in disguise as a Goran, I think is what they called it. Um, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not having this in text, you can't write down what they're talking right. about. You can, only, exactly. you can only guess what they were talking about here in this case. And under, and he's using the name Malone, which sounded very earth-like, but anyway, uh, and Obi-Wan is posing as his attendant. And when they get there, oh, uh, Anakin's got to get through these pod races so that he can get to the final area and get the inner access he needs to figure out where the spy is. The issue is, is that there is a hut there on Varl, which is Nafig, which is kind of surprising because Varl used to be the homeworld of the huts before they were driven off and I guess went to Nal Hutta. And uh, Nafig has seen Obi-Wan before and Obi-Wan kind of overestimates how likely it is that Nafig is going to recognize him, but he kind of has to leave the planet and leave Anakin to his own devices in these pod races. It's not quite as extreme as they're making it out in that blurb we read. Mm -hmm. But while Obi-Wan's in space, he comes across these creatures called uh, the Kota Kappa. And I have no idea how that's spelled. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I wrote down like six different versions in the notes that you, we're working from tonight. You guessed pretty well in all of those. <laughs> yeah. And these are black shapeless creatures that drove the huts away from Varl and they attack ships. They're drawn to heat and they'll attach themselves to ships. And then they'll like drum out a, a hypnotic beat that'll get people in the ships to like open airlocks and expose themselves to the creatures. And then they get eaten. 
And it turns out that Baron Grot, who's behind Nafig the Hut, is he's a pike running things here on Varl in this. Um, he set up this whole pod racing thing as a circuit, as a cover for his ability uh, for farming these kappa that he wants to use against all the other crime syndicates out there. Okay. And then eventually Anakin goes through some pod races, does well enough, although he kind of gets exposed for being who he actually is. And they defeat Nafig and uh, Baron Grot and they rescue the spy and all's well that ends well on that. Okay, so I gave you the summary there. Where do you want to start? There's a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, wow, you really laid down a lot there. Um, <laughs> so I guess starting with um, Anakin coming to Varl, and the whole purpose was because Yoda thought, okay, you're the per perfect person for this. And at first, Anakin was bummed because he wasn't able to actually be himself. Mm -hmm. And he had to pose, you know, as as this other person. And, but, you know, he did get to build his own pod racer. And so it was really fun to get his perspective on sort of reminiscing, you know, back to Tatooine when he built the pod for the Boonta Eve classic, but yet he was a little bit sad at the fact that there was really no one to share it with, um, other than drip, which was his, his pit droid, which I thought was so cool. I, mm -hmm. you know, you know me and I love the droids and that, and that kind of thing. So, you know, I think it's, it's valuable to note that this is something that is obviously right up on Anakin's alley and he was so excited to do it. But then he, when he got into that breathing apparatus for being Malone, I mean, the first thing you hear in the audiobook is. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, wow. That gave me chills because I was thinking to myself, wow, is that a foreshadow? You know, of course, we all know what happens to Anakin. Mm -hmm. he, he, and then, then he has those, um, those like protein goo things that he has to suck down. And I'm thinking that's probably how Vader had to eat, you know, kind of a thing. Yeah. So it was just very clever the way that that they they worked that in there. But a few things with uh, Obi-Wan being this attache and the fact that Anakin was just loving the that fact and, and Obi-Wan even clicking his heels whenever mm -hmm. he had to attend to him. And so the reason that he left was because to Anakin's surprise, of course, he uh obi-wan and uh qui-gon had worked with nafeg kind of backhandedly you know to do some some things that they needed to do and anakin was kind of afraid or not afraid he was uh surprised at that mm -hmm. which you know was kind of like oh okay but you know i guess the big thing that you talked about is the whole idea of these creatures these mm -hmm. these kappa and you know of course this is like a kind of a new creature but not and the whole idea of the nameless comes up in this, which I thought was very clever. Um, and, you know, you're just hitting everything here. <laughs> yeah, the like, yeah. sort of thing. So, but yeah, so I was just kind of trying to address some of the, the points that, that you had made. But that was the whole thing with Anakin mm -hmm. going through these moons of Varl that he saw these, these literally the writing on the wall of these things and these hungry hands and whatnot. And so that's what sets up everything going on basically, you know, with the Baron and, and Nafig and how that relationship all plays out. Right. Okay. So let's pick one of these topics then. Um, first off, yeah, you, you brought up the reference to the nameless here. I thought that was great. I, oh, I was yeah. glad to see that you know, the reference to here, because we've seen references to the Nile in the prequel trilogy, a drill trilogy, trilogy era tie and stuff that's come out over the past couple of years. And that's been cool. You know, they find Nile technology and it gets, it gets referenced this way, but Obi-Wan is explicitly addressing the nameless here. So mm -hmm. it's not, you know, whereas in um, phase two, the Jedi encountered the nameless, but they seemingly forgot about them by the time of phase one, which takes place, you know, 150 years later in this case. And now we're what, a hundred, 200 years beyond that. And the Jedi are not making the same mistake. They remember what the nameless are. So I thought that was a pretty cool reference uh, to make there, especially since, you know, you are dealing with another unexplained creature in this one here. The, you know, these Kappa, it's interesting that, you know, they were part of this lore that comes with the huts now that they're the reason why the huts have abandoned this world. You know, they're, you know, which is 
it's believed to be their home world because these creatures would prey on them. But it's a little weird that nobody else has ever heard of it in there. Right. It, it's, you know, it's kind of the, it's kind of the same mistake that the Jedi made. It's like, you know, the huts encountered these creatures. They drove them away and never bothered to tell anybody about it. You know, they, they aren't anyone's archives until, you know, Baron Grot discovers them and decides that he's going to farm them and use them to against the other, you know, other, the Pikes and, you know, his own crime syndicate and others to try and, uh, you know, enhance his own stature in the criminal underworld. Right. I, I did think it was really clever the way that they explained what these cop, like how they feed and they start mm -hmm. off with the heat signatures and then, you know, do this, this hypnotic music, like you said, that makes you want to open airlocks and, you know, do all these crazy things, but without the heat, they cannot live. So they were basically just trying to make them extinct once they left Varl. And so that's why I guess we just never hear of them again, but I'm sure Joe mm -hmm. Costa knew has some things in the, <laughs> the Jedi archives about them afterwards. But yeah, I mean, it, it does help to explain, as you said, you know, why the Huts left Varl as their original home world. And it's just mm -hmm. really cool to see, again, you know, the literal writing on the wall in terms of some of these different sorts of, of legends that come out of all of these different kinds of species in Star Wars, which is super cool. And we keep getting more new things, which is awesome. Yeah. The one part of this that did not work for me is that the, this whole pod racing thing was Baron Grotz way of getting victims to feed to the Kappa mm. that he was farming. I'm like, really? It, that's the point of all the pod racing here. I mean, that's the most efficient way to get victims for your farming. Mm -hmm. That seemed like a bit of a stretch, but mm. Okay, but that gives us an opportunity to talk a bit about the pod racing here. And so you've got Anakin posing as his Goran, and he eventually gets outed. Uh, and, you know, he reveals, because well, he reveals himself. And then, you know, he's the boy from Tatooine that everyone's heard of. And they know that, you know, and Nafig's like, oh, I can make a ton of money off of having you in my pod race. And so he's going to really lean into that. And Anakin offers to exchange himself for the spy. And so the spy is getting sent home. But we get some, um, we get some other cameos. We got Ben Quadraneros. Yes, showing up, and he's way more competent than he was in the Phantomist, which wouldn't be hard because he never got off the starting line <laughs> in the Boon to Eve classic. But I am very fascinated by the droid pod racer that Anakin kind of just nicknames Ringer. There, yeah, he was the um, the droid. He was a droid that was used to drive the conveyx trains on vandor which was that frozen world that showed up in solo a star wars story mm -hmm. and they basically hardwired him into one of these pod racers and you know he's very efficient and can calculate and he's very very good at racing but then you know at the end of all this um uh ringer sacrificed himself because uh Nafig was basically going to tear everything down. He didn't like the way that Baron Grot was uh, headed with things. And so he sicked his own battle droids on the, uh, on the pod racers as they were racing and ringer like, disabled the binders to allow two the, the two engines and then his own pod to like destroy this destroyed barricade so that the other pod racers could get through. And yeah. then Anakin repays him by that, by bringing, by getting, his memory core, putting it in new droid and taking it back to Vandor so he can resume his work as a train operator. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. And of course, mm -hmm. you know, Anakin's always had a soft spot for droids. And 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 Ringer did remind me a lot of K2SO in that way, you know, mm -hmm. just in the, the little sacrifice that that he made. But, um, you know, some of the things that you brought up, it was good to see Ben Quadraneros in this light because, as you said, you know, he was kind of you know, posed as this buffoon in the Phantom Menace because he never really did anything. And so we find out that he's actually a really skilled pod racer. And I love mm -hmm. how they were referring to Sebulba too. you know, the whole time mm -hmm. there were some people that loved him and some people that couldn't stand him. And, you know, all of the stories about Sebulba and this, that, and the other. And, and of course, Anakin was just trying to bite his tongue the whole time as they were in, in some of these, these areas together. But I thought the dynamic between all of the pod racers was very well played out in terms of how, you know, even though they were competitive in the end, you know, they realized that they were all literally fighting for the same purpose mm -hmm. and that they were willing to work together because of that. And then Anakin finds out that again, be careful what you wish for, because once he gives himself up to Nafig, 
he's thinking, you know, like all the light is out of his eyes. And they even, they even said that, you know, there was this fire there before and like, he didn't even feel it anymore. Like he was just going through the motions and he was just doing this because guess what? Now he's a slave again. And so I think that that's where in the description, the idea of he realizes what it means to become a Padawan. And even Obi-Wan says that like, ah, oh, he's figured it out kind of a thing. Yeah. But I love how Nafig kept calling him little prince, even though he found out who he was. Mm -hmm. After he actually wasn't Malone. I, I liked that. He was like, oh, little prince. He kept calling him that, which is cool. Yeah. And Anakin's pride, you know, got the better of him. You know, so yes. aptly titled here because all he needed to do was finish in a qualifying position with each one of these races to get to the final race. But he decided in like, I think it was the second race. It's like, well, why can't I just win this one and win it by a mile and create this reputation that will have people like Sabalba coming after me? And that exposed him and got him in some trouble, you know, and it resulted in, uh, you know, problems there for him for. So, you know, he, he learned a valuable lesson there, but I also got to say when Anakin was trash talking with the other pod racers, mm -hmm. that's the most he came off like little boy Anakin on Tatooine. It was like listening to Anakin, you know, trade insults with Sebulba there. I for thought sure. that part was incredibly well done. Mm -hmm, I agree. And and I do think that, you know, overall, the the characters of both Anakin and Obi-Wan were written very well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and again, we don't have really anything of Anakin at this age, but it's it's everything that I feel like he he would have been. And it's it's just very well told. And he needed this lesson. He needed this lesson in humility and sacrifice and again, you know, that was that was how he was able to move forward and become who he was. Right. There was a moment here in this book where um, Obi-Wan has gone back up to the ship after, you know, he's afraid that Nafig is going to out him, is going to know who he is. And it turns out that Nafig probably wouldn't have recognized him on site at the to right. begin with until the end. <laughs> but he goes back up to the Silence, which is the name of the ship that the Trandoshan captain has. I think her name was something like... Uh, something scale um bright scales oh no, it was not bright it was, it was no like, it was, not bright it was, scales it was double us it was it was a uh, um anyways we'll think about it but uh okay. but anyways it gets attacked by the kappa and you know everyone else on the ship succumbs pretty quickly and he uses some of his ingenuity to uh, create an explosion to draw the kappa to that then he gets to an escape pod and he launches and he disables some of the um life support on it so that it won't generate the heat and attract other kappa and then he goes into a trance a force mm -hmm. trance and basically winks out of the force and anakin realizes yeah uh, this hits anakin while he's pod racing there yeah. and anakin is legitimately concerned that obi-wan just got killed this reminded me an awful lot of that episode of the clone wars where obi-wan fakes his own death Mm -hmm. so and then he is disguised as a bounty hunter and I, I was wondering if there was any inspiration drawn from that now i think th when obi-wan did that in the clone wars it wasn't a force technique or maybe it was but uh as much as it was like a, a drug or something there but i don't know it, it, it i i liked the similarity but it also kind of raised an issue for me like well obi-wan did this once you know, would Anakin not have thought of this when it happened later in the Clone Wars? But I don't know. Would you have any uh, thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. um, just the fact that it really did affect Anakin more than Anakin mm -hmm. thought that it would. You know, mm -hmm. not that he did not not care for Obi-Wan, but I think that he he was even surprised at the depth of his, you know, caring for Obi-Wan. But yeah, I think you're right as far as like later on, would that have been something that he would should have been able to figure out? But mm -hmm. apparently not. But and it was scale song. I thought of scale it. Scale song. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking bright scales because I'm I'm rereading the Aragon series by Christopher Paolini, and that's what Aragon calls Sophia. But <laughs> gotcha. anyway. But <laughs> and and on that same note with scale song, I thought it was really cool how you know she was basically you know telling Obi Wan how incredibly smart Anakin is, you know, and she says that, that I have. Uh, hatchlings of my own and yada 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 but this boy is smart you know and and mm -hmm. so she really did see the um you know that just that prodigy level that anakin was with building the the pod racer and and whatnot and anakin you know he was in his 
he was in his heyday because he was able to use all the expensive parts that the Republic bought for him, <laughs> which mm-hmm. I thought was funny. Yeah. And she, yeah. And, um, scale songs make mention about, you know, she has the two hatchlings at home and I was like, Oh, do you? Cause you know, like we, I remember stories. I, I think it was like Bosk who was like priding himself on the fact that he like devoured his hatch mates, <laughs> hatchling mates and stuff like that. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and so it was different take on the Trandoshans. They're not all, they're not all these hunter types that, uh, are just bloodthirsty and all about making their name in the hunt. So True. that was kind of fun to see a uh, one working against type there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Got anything else that stood out to you? I mean, I, I like the end of this where Yoda congratulated Obi-Wan on a successful mission. And, and then, you know, he tells him that Qui-Gon would have been proud of him. And after Yoda could see the, the impact that had on Obi-Wan, he said, now imagine how your Padawan would feel hearing the same type of thing for you. And so he goes up onto the roof where uh, Anakin you know, viewed the mission as a failure for what it cost, mm-hmm. but you know, they actually were successful and then they get promoted to the mission circuit for that. And so, you know, they kind of had a bonding moment while they were looking at the various stars that they could see in the light polluted chorus and sky. Mm-hmm. But uh, I thought that was a fitting end. Yes. Yes. And, and I was going to bring that up because that was very touching. And, mm-hmm. and again, you know, we, see that at the very beginning, as you said, not that their relationship was strained, but it was definitely not in sync. And this, this helped them so much to be able to put things into better perspective. And, and it definitely helped Anakin to see, you know, where, where his priorities were in terms of, you know, now he realizes that this is his place Mm -hmm. that, you know, even though he was questioning, like, do I, should I really have chosen to be a Jedi? And as you said, should I ever have left Tatooine? And this really did help to cement that for him. And I think that that's the, the greatest thing that could happen for the two of them going forward. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Anything else? Um, I don't think so. I just, again, I just thought it was really well told and I, I need to listen to it again. And I love the whole pod racing thing. I just, I thought it was great. And Anakin, you know, winning by a light year and going a thousand kilometers an hour and, you know, all the things. So. So yeah, very well done. Yeah, they they did a good job with the pod racing scenes. They um the sound they, they incorporated all the pod racing sounds that we're familiar mm-hmm. with, and uh, it was very descriptive. I like that. Um, you know, it was I can imagine that be a hard scene to write to that didn't bog down in the detail, but still was detailed enough that people could envision the course, um, yes. and all that. So yeah, they did a really great job with that. Yeah, I agree. There were some laugh out loud moments for me too. You know, mm-hmm. I, I needed to write them down, but you know, at the time it was like, oh gosh, that it was just so perfect and so fitting. So mm-hmm. yeah, very well done. Yeah. Guess recommendation for both of us. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well then, well, just want to say thank you all for joining us for this episode of podcast starters and a discussion of Padawan's pride by Brian Miller. Um, I'd also point out that uh, Kevin Kemp did a great job with the narration we didn't really talk about that much, but yeah. uh, we hope you've enjoyed the discussion. And if you did, then make sure you like, rate, subscribe, you know, and leave a review for the podcast, wherever it is that you catch your, your podcast and then head over to retrozap.com and you can check out all the great content that we've got going on over there. And as, as well as the other shows on the Retrozap podcast network, including agents of shields, case files, anime, cast, Bruce and blasters, dork lair, Doomcast, enjoy stuff, love death and robots, plus superhero suite and warp trails. And uh, with that in mind, Jay, you want to go ahead and refresh everyone's memory on what our social media contacts are and where else they can find what we have to offer on the internet. Sure. So we can be easily found on Facebook, Instagram, and X at Podcast Artist. And you can also hit us up on our Pinterest boards where we have tons of different ideas posted over there for everything Star Wars. And then we also have two YouTube outlets. So we have the traditional YouTube as well as YouTube music where you can catch all of our past episodes. And you can also interact with us and leave comments and reviews over there as well. And we're still looking for that plaque you know for all the subs so keep keep them coming and recommend those out and then we also have our discord room which is part of the retro zap discord server so if you're up for some real-time chatter you can hit up the link in our show notes for that and then we also have a link to our t public store where you can pick up one of seven different show logo designs that are available on everything from t-shirts and sweatshirts to coffee mugs and you know even pod racing decals no i'm kidding but (laughs) there's a lot of stuff over there so once again hit the link in our show notes and that does help to support the show 
All right. Uh, before we get out of here, you want to give everyone the rundown of what you got going on with cosplay? Sure. So you can always find me on my Instagram, which is at j.snipscosplay. And I am as Ahsoka and as well as Hera, two different versions of her and the fourth sister, my original concept Mandalorian, Leia from Endor and other versions as well. And I'm always having so much fun posting photos of friends that I've met through different events that I've done most recently, the Cleveland Gaming Classic, and just lifting up other cosplayers, content creators, small business owners, and the like. So if you'd like to join in on the fun, once again, that's at j.snipscosplay on Instagram. All right. Upcoming on the show, we end the week with a look at some recent Star Wars news. And then Monday, we begin the week with our next episode in our The Clone Wars rewatch, which will be episode nine of season one. So make sure you join us for that. And with all that having been said, just want to say thanks again for listening to episode 791 of Podcast Artists. Have a great rest of your week. Until next time, may the force be with you.